this video is going to be on a complete solution of a one dimensional finite element solver. We will start with a simple equation that we have here that goes from x is equal to one until three. We have a uh, Dirichlet boundary condition and a Neumann boundary condition here. And what we will do is we will solve this using linear elements. Uh, we will begin with four elements. We will do it for, for eight, 16 and 32. And for each uh, solution, for each of these four solutions, we will plot the L2 error versus the mesh size for each refinement. So the first thing we need to do is to derive the weak form and uh, I've already solved this, so I'll just copy paste. So what we have here is uh, this equation, this differential equation here. We will multiply this by a function v and integrate. So we just take this, we multiply it by v and we integrate. We integrate from a to b in this case, and then we will just substitute a and b with 1 and 3 here. Uh, then what we will do is we will identify wherever we have higher derivative terms, which is here, uh, second derivative. U is, uh, we take the derivative two times of, out of U here. So we take this term and we will integrate that by parts. So this term here becomes this term minus this term here. And this is where the boundary conditions, uh, the the natural boundary conditions will pop up. So, thus we substitute and we will end up having uh, this and we'll move this part over here to the right hand side and it becomes positive. Now, if we take a look at these boundary conditions, here we will see that this is equated to uh, whatever it is in B times the test function in B minus whatever it is in A times VA. And this is where we actually apply our boundary conditions here. So we see that on our, uh, in B here, on this side, uh, this here will actually be minus two. And the test function on these will always evaluate to one. So uh, this will just be replaced by the values we have here. Take note though, if you are given something in A and this value is negative because of this negative sign here. So finally, what we have is then this. So once we have arrived at our weak form, we have to look at the um, approximation. So Again, pasting in stuff. So we have our uh, function u approximated by multiplying the nodal values of u times the basis functions. And the same goes for um, the derivative of u. Take the derivative of the basis functions and multiply them by the nodal values of u. So in general, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, right hand side integral uh, will look like this. Uh, in general, we have could have some uh, some factor k in there. So this integral becomes, uh, if you substitute du dx by uh, d phi dx times u, and then uh, dv dx becomes d phi dx. So we have this done. And on the <clears throat> the other term, the load term is then FV, where F could be any load, uh, becomes phi transposed F dx. So now we can move the U component here, the, the nodal values, we can move them outside of the integral. And thus we will get we will get our integral here, uh, where this multiplies this then, because they are uh, they are uh, vectors, 
we need to do the outer product, which means that this one is transpose times this one. So this will yield a matrix. And uh, the whole integral will be a matrix. Uh, U here is then being multiplied a matrix vector operation here. And then this equals to the load vector minus the um, the natural boundary conditions over here. And uh, the natural boundary conditions, if we have a K indeed here, then this K must be here as well, because this is how we derive this. So if we have, if we have a K in here, like so, then this K propagates in here, and of course, in here, in here, and in front of this as well. So let's remove this, but let's keep this here to have it like it is in general. So we can just set k to one then. All right, so that's the approximation. Uh, and of course, this yields a uh, linear system, a matrix system, which is SU is equal to F. Com we combine these terms here into one F. So once we have established this, we can do the isoparametric map. And uh, this map is going to be saying that, okay, we will not be doing this integral from A to B, we will instead be doing it from um, zero to one in this case. So, uh, or whatever our basis functions are defined in. In, in our case, we will be doing zero to one. So this uh, basis function here, the derivative of it, uh, using the chain rule, we get d phi dx c, and this multiplies uh, dx c dx. And of course, the inverse of this is the Jacobian. So dx c d, dx dx c is the Jacobian, which in one dimension is the same as the element length. And this means that we get d phi dx is d phi dx c multiplied by 1 over h. Thus, our element stiffness matrix becomes this thing here, k d phi dx c transpose d phi dx c times 1 over h. And that's because we have uh, d phi dx c multiplying 1 over h times itself, so we get 1 over h squared, but then we must multiply dx is equal to h times dx c, so one of them goes away and we have only one left. For the load vector, this is similar. We get d phi dt, and now this of course is a basis function in terms of c, uh, multiplying f times h dc and if we had a mass matrix which we don't in this case but we can just set set row to zero here and use this as well uh, we will have this scenario where we have phi transpose times phi times h dc if we had this matrix here, but in our case, we don't have any U in here. So, but we will take a look at an example where we did have this as well. So that's the general uh, derivation of our uh, stiffness load vector and uh, mass matrix. And you need to do this for every problem that you're solving, either by hand or write it out in your your code like this but make a note of this